<laughs> well, Professor, let's have your information. Uh, I think I could stand a glass of brandy after all. Certainly. <laughs> brandy. <laughs> that makes me think of a very funny story which is going all over Warsaw. A story about our Führer. Now, how does it go? Oh, yes. They named a brandy after Napoleon, they made a herring out of Bismarck, and the Führer is going to end up as a piece of cheese. <laughs> Don't you think it's funny? No. Neither would the Führer. And I don't believe Adolf Hitler will go down in history as a delicatessen. Professor, look here. I was only joking, just repeating what I heard. After all, I never... Please don't misunderstand me. You see, I'm loyal. I would have... Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Professor, do you by any chance intend to tell the Fuhrer about this? Why should I ruin you? Oh, yes, of course. It's very nice. I can safely promise you the Fuhrer will never hear it from my lips. My word of honor. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Professor, now, if you would be so kind, what about the underground movement? What exactly are your plans? Oh, you want to know? Huh? Yes, if you don't mind. Well, I, uh, I have the key in my hand. All I have to find is the lock. It's better than having the lock and having to find the key. How does it sound? Promising. Most promising. But tell me, what exactly do you intend to do? Well, then, let's get down to details. Yes, if you please. There are no details. At least not yet. But the important thing is, I have the name of the leader of the whole underground movement. And if we play our cards right and carefully... I understand. If you watch the shepherd, you are bound to find the flock. What's the name of the shepherd? Bogoslav Ravonsky. Send Captain Schultz in. <laughs> So they call me concentration camp yard. <laughs> yes, come. Captain Schultz, there's a man in this town. What's his name? Ravansky. You mean Bogoslav Ravansky? Yes. Oh, you don't have to worry about him. What do you mean? We shot him two days ago. Ravansky shot? I refuse to believe. Don't you realize whom you shot, Captain Schultz? I risk my life to get the key man of the underground movement, and just when we're ready, it's sabotage, sabotage, sabotage! I resent that, Professor. Why did you shoot him? We had definite proof that this man was telling some outrageous, supposed to be funny stories about the funeral. There's no reason to shoot the man. I agree with you. At least not right away. So you shot Ravansky like that. Wouldn't it have been a good idea to look him over first? Yes, why don't we look over people before we shoot them? I'm sorry, Colonel, but you signed the order of execution yourself. Oh, well, I sign so many every day. You see, I can't rely on my own people anymore. Please, Colonel, maybe we can still save the situation. There's one other man, a possibility, a good possibility. Maximilian Piotrowski. Maximilian Piotrowski? Don't tell me you... Yes. Well, Colonel, all I can say is you can't have your cake and shoot it, too. It can't be done. And if they hear about this in England, I'm sure they'll gladly give you the Victoria Cross. I resent that, Professor. That's all, Schultz. Yes, sir. I, uh, I didn't like the way Captain Schultz shifted the responsibility back to you. Neither did I. You know, there's always something wrong with a man who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't eat meat. You mean our fury? Oh, no, no, please, Professor. I hope you won't. Why should I ruin you again? Thank you so much. 